How's it going, Gray Boys? We have won our quarterfinal matchup in the college football playoff, and it's going to be on to the semifinals. Right away, we can go ahead and load up our NCAA 14 utility tool and start to load into a step two to set up these semifinals. Now, after beating Cincinnati, Georgia Tech is the team that we are going to face off against in the Peach Bowl on our side of the bracket. On the other side, number two, Texas lost a shocking one to a very good number seven or seven seed Georgia. Uh, and Clemson was able to win, I think, by one point against the Volunteers. So I have no idea how good Georgia Tech is other than uh, I think that they, well, Clemson won the ACC, I think. Maybe it was Georgia Tech that won? I think actually Georgia Tech won and Clemson got in as an at-large. So we're playing a, a conference championship winning team. And the Yellow Jackets are 12-2 and two on the season. We're sitting at 13-1. and one. Our one loss of the season was to an Auburn team that actually lost their last three of the season, missing out uh, uh, on the playoffs. So uh, that's kind of a bad look for us. But at the same time, Auburn did pretty well. So here it is loaded up. Number one seed versus the number four seed. Still no uh, matchup information for us, but let's just hop straight into this game. Nothing really to think about or worry about. So, uh, you know, we only have one other game that we'll check in on after hours, but it's going to be us against Georgia Tech and Georgia Tech. Ooh, bad news for them, only an 84 overall. USC was much higher at like a 93, and we made pretty easy work of them. So it's going to be up to the Yellow Jackets to get this done. We are going to be the home team throughout these playoffs should we continue to win. So we'll have to change things up a little bit. Let's go with the gray pants in this matchup. And for Georgia Tech here in this version 18 of the college football revamped mod, I think they do have some updated looks. Yeah, they were. I just had to go and double check. So they do have some updated looks. Uh, the Oh, man, I like the all white. Uh, I'm not going to lie. The black watch is pretty solid. Let's go. Let's go with the white out for the Yellow Jackets and... Uh, We'll see if they can match us at all. I might sound a little bit cocky at this point in the season, but uh, besides Auburn, nobody has shown us that they can compete. Number one in defense in the nation with uh, the second scoring, second highest scoring offense. We don't need to use our offense a lot because our defense and our special teams are just so good. Georgia Tech doesn't necessarily have a bad offense or a bad defense. They've done enough 9-1 in the ACC, 12-2 and two overall to get to where they are at this point, but... You got to think it might be the end of the road for them. These are, again, top players for next year. So we are sitting in the mid to high 80s. And for them, they are about the same spot, just a little bit lower overall with some injuries. A running back and a right guard out with season-ending injuries. And among some other things, that might be something that changes for us next year because we have been uh, pretty much injury-free the entire season. So here we go once again, Mercedes-Benz Stadium for the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl in this college football playoff semifinal. We've got the beautiful new uh, coin toss coin. Thanks again to the CFB revamp team. And uh, I, I feel like we've been doing this recently. We're going to continue. We're going to start with the football. No wind as we are inside this dome stadium. And RJ Rivera... I think he's taken the opening kickoff back in the past two games. He's got some blockers out in front of him, but he's not going to be able to do much more with that. We're going to just, I guess, have to have the offense get out on the field to start with. It's been a while since they've actually started a game as RJ spins his way into some open space and picks up 11 on the first carry of the game. Love those runs to the outside when we get a couple of good blocks as we're going to go triple option early in this one. Looking for the right pitch. We make the pitch. It's to RJ Rivera, but he's got nothing doing. I thought maybe he was going to have a chance to stand up and keep running, but still a gain of two. This feels like a good a time as any to throw that first screen pass of the game. We know that that's kind of a necessary thing. And we get it completed to RJ Rivera, who gets some blocks downfield. And he picks up the first down. It's the RJ show. The runner-up for the Heisman in his true freshman season. But we'll go ahead and let him take a little bit of a breather as we try to run it with Derek Bentley. A little bit of a power. RJ rushing the tight end, goes in motion, comes back across, trying to look for the blocks. Bentley's got nothing doing for it, and he gets stopped at the line of scrimmage here at midfield. Just one pass on this drive so far. And in a second and 10, this could be a dangerous play, but we are going with triple option. Number two of the drive, going to have to hand it off to Bentley, and he's only going to get a couple. Great defense from the Yellow Jackets. So here we are with a third and eight. 
I don't think we can comfortably pass this football. So we're going to bring rushing over to the other side, but just RJ Rivera looking for a toss. If we can get those edges sealed off, we could have a lot of space to work with going north. Side steps inside five defenders and picks up the first down. I feel like there's no reason the chain should have been moving there, but he gets it done. The drive stays alive, and we continue to march down the field, waiting. X over the middle of the field is open, but... Well, that's, uh, that's what happens when your quarterback is terrible early in the game. You know, I really hate having to do this, but uh, we're going to go with a little swing pass. Bentley can't break the tackle. He's going to lose four. Third and 14. I don't think we get out of this one with a simple little toss play. Kind of was thinking maybe a mid-screen, but this is four down territory. And we will save that for the fourth down because it's triple option time once again. Maybe a little bit cheesy to run it this much, but RJ Rivera gets the handoff. He's got the corner, and he's not able to sneak his way up the sideline to move the chain, so it is fourth down. Well, we'll see what we can do here. Going for it, not letting the kicker come out. Fourth and five, it is that mid-screen, and it's caught by Jeff Fontenot, who gets absolutely leveled, but he moves the chains for us, gets that first down. The fact that we are still out on the field with our offense, I think, is a miracle. Inside the 25, we'll hand this one off up the middle to RJ Rivera. He's going to fight his way forward inside the red zone. And we will just continue these screen plays. The mid-screen for the running back. Yeah, he's kind of open. That's completed. RJ Rivera. <laughs> Absolutely broken play, but it worked. Four completed passes on five attempts for Maurice. Is he ready to throw down field? That's going to be the big question on this one. Stepping back, waiting over the middle. We're going to have Rucker come open. Chris Rucker can't hold on. It was an accurate throw for Maurice Tate, but just a dangerous pass. I'm just going to be wondering if he can do it again. On this play action, second and 10, waiting. B over the middle. That was a terrible spot to throw it. Jeff Fontenot comes down with it one-handed and somehow made positive yards out of the play. I felt the pressure coming, started to leave the pocket right as I had seen Fontenot coming open over the middle of the field. So maybe a bad decision to throw it there, but we can live with it. Third and six, it's RJ Rivera into the corner of the end zone. First points of the game, RJ just too quick for the Yellow Jackets to catch up and sting him. And that's going to be a 7-0 lead. Man, we burned almost the entire first quarter on that drive. So that was uh, interesting. Maybe a little bit more difficult than I expected it to be, but the offense was able to prevail. And our defense has done some work in recent games. We'll see if they can continue to get it done. Felt like they were everywhere last game, getting three interceptions, including a user interception, which I think is incredibly rare. But this is a Georgia Tech team that's going to the option early, and it's London. Oh, man, a risky tackle. Kind of went for the hit stick, but he got him in the backfield for a loss of three. Very important to remember that the starting running back for these Yellow Jackets is out for this game, for the season. This is going to be a triple option. We're there to stuff it. No, London has his tackle broken. More misses, and Green pulls him down. Oh, that should have been a massive stop. Well, regardless of the starting running back, everybody else seems to be doing a decent job stepping up in the backup. It's actually an All-American as this one's around up the middle, and Logan will be there to stop him in the backfield. So that's going to be a three and out for the defense. That was a uh, very quick stop. Oh, man, could have been a lot worse for Georgia Tech as well, as this fear very much could be returnable for Archie Rivera. No. Tried to do a little bit too much there, and we just get four yards out of it. Let's uh, let's take a shot downfield. They're pressed up. Safeties, I don't know if they're going to be good enough. Let's see what we can do. Maurice Tate step in. This is a tough throw. It just went off Fontenot's head. Well, uh, try to get some positive yards here. On this second down, RJ phew, met at the line again and just easily brought down. That's going to be the end of our first quarter. No reason to try and sneak another play in there. Up 7-0. We have the ball, but a third and 10 to work with. Not certain that we can get this done. We got to be looking for a pass maybe beyond the line of scrimmage, but defense was looking good. Offense able to get it done, and we're in the lead. So midway through this first half, let's try to put it through the air. Maurice Tate on the play action. Gets sacked. We would have had guys coming open if we had another half a second, but Clifton White's Gets in the backfield, a loss of eight. We'll have to punt this one away. We'll see what we can do. Trying to get some sort of coffin corner punt. That's not going to hit the ground, is it? No, it does, but he catches it on the bounce. And he's going to have a great return. Georgia Tech across midfield. 
No help from their offense, but special teams and defense getting it done. We saw three running plays to open up their last drive. We're going to come out and try to prevent them from doing anything on this one. It's going to be a play action over the middle. Wards open, picks up a block, and Wards is off to the races. Nobody's going to be able to catch the big man. And just like that, Georgia Tech ties it up on their second possession. A one-play, 49-yard touchdown drive to the tight end. And that's a school record for receptions in a season for him as well. That was impressive. Just uh, maybe got away with a little bit of a block in the back. But that's on us for not being able to stop it. We brought the blitz and it definitely did not pay off. Sarge gets us another mediocre return out to the 28-yard line. Maybe we need to return to what was working well for us on that first drive is man it really looks like they're going to bring pressure but we're going to run into it anyways rj getting some nice blocks but gets tackled from behind and he's only going to get one well maybe we can pass on this one i don't know if we're going to have any sort of luck here but we're going to send chris rutger deep we know he's pretty quick not as quick as fontenot but yeah fontenot's wide open we can't not throw it to jeff uh, it's a shame that the safety kind of stuck with uh chris there because that would have been a nice touchdown Worst part about that play was it was just a bad throw for Maurice. He kind of underthrew it. Had to have Fontenot come back for it. And on a counter, RJ Rivera is going to lose a yard. Running game is not quite there yet. As it's a second 11. I shouldn't say it's not quite there. It's not quite there on the last two drives. Why is going to be wide open if we can get it there and it's just overthrown. Good play from the linebacker to stick with that there. I had to lob it up, but it was just too late. I'm going to try to catch these guys off guard a little bit. We're going to go a little bit of a play action, see if we can get these guys caught out again, stepping back to throw, waiting, 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 not feeling anything. Maurice outside the pocket. I got to get rid of that. Uh, whoever is streaking down the sideline on the right side was wide open for a touchdown, but no way we can make that throw. And just like that, we have to get rid of this football. That is brutal. Maybe we can actually get the coffin corner this time. If it hits the ground, if he doesn't catch it, no, catches it in the air. Oh, we can't sneak it by Andrew Smith here. Well, I'm going to look awfully foolish if uh, I talked all that game and we can't back it up and get beaten by Georgia Tech. They have the chance to take their first lead of the game. So they run it for two yards on first down. Second and eight, maybe expecting a pass there. They're going to put a man in motion, though, and it's the quarterback. Ooh, I don't know what that was. He had his running back open and it just threw it away. Maybe got scared. Well, regardless, this puts us into a third and eight. Trips left for the Yellow Jackets. What can we do to stop this one? They will step back. It's a slip screen. I can't get there, though. It's up to Napoleon, and the Frenchman gets enough of a tackle. Pushes him out of bounds. Man, he had a blocker there. That could have been bad. But this one's going to be a three and out now for Georgia Tech. We're going to be in the, uh, the pump blocked zone. I don't want them to fake this one on me, and it will still be fieldable by Rivera. If he can make somebody miss, you never know. Well, he didn't do that, but still got six yards. With no blockers on that with no blockers on that punt return, he actually got further than he did on his first attempt as this running up the middle goes for two. At some point, somebody is going to break free on one of these plays. I'm going to bet it could be on this play. Second and eight, going with the play action. Can we catch him out of position? That's a tough throw. Probably picked off. Oh, man. Foolish throw for me there. Well, this is interesting. Third and eight now. I might think this is four down territory. I'm calling conservatively. We're going mid-screen again. They covered that all too well. Nothing that we can do. Jody Gentry oh, had words otherwise. He, he, he came close to getting that. That might not have been the smartest play calling decision we've had today, but I had to go for it. Tried to do something interesting. It didn't quite work out. Bit of a shame. This one fair caught. Oh, man. Kind of turned into a defensive battle here. All I know is that I cannot bring pressure. These guys, oh, I'm kind of feeling like this could be a quarterback draw, but no, quarterback keeps it. London, there he goes, running for it. We can't get to him. Trying to strip the football. He's got blockers downfield, still trying to strip the football. 28 yards for Sam Lake on the scramble. I feel like if we timed a blitz correctly, we could absolutely devastate these guys, but it's just not something I'm feeling like it's going to happen is we read the draw play perfectly but oh my gosh this running back just obliterates London and then jumps over him as a boss move is I have no idea what this formation is 
Uh, they're going to have guys open all over the place. Something weird happened in the play calling there in that hurry up, and it leads to 18 yards for Georgia Tech. Minute and a half left in this half. They just took their first time out, and they're threatening to take the lead. They get the ball to start the third quarter. This is going to be a run up the middle for sure. No, quarterback, they ran that play earlier. Kind of that uh, option pass. He just got rid of it. That's really good news for us as we will try to press up here. I'm expecting them to pass the football. This kind of looks like another option. Quarterback, he actually completed that one. <laughs> They've been trying that time and time again. Uh, he keeps making the right read, but finally makes the right pass. Now I just have to do something to try and stop this. Oh, that's going to help. That's going to help tremendously. A false start. Offense starting to get a little bit too excited there. Jumps early. That'll cost them uh, massively. So here we are in the third and two now. Curious to see, or third and eight. Sorry, I don't know where two came from. Curious to see where they go. Quarterback taking time. He fumbles, and it's Valentine who picks up the football. A huge time for the first turnover of the game. That should stand. Didn't seem like he could have gone down in that time, but the scramble, very, very costly. Oh, man, a minute and 12. We have the chance to retake the lead now. Avery Rawls getting involved in a big way on defense, and we're going to try and hit the home run, really shift the momentum of this game. This is a 50-50 ball. No way Jody Gentry gets under that one, even though he had maybe a couple of inches on his guy. Sometimes it feels like Maurice uh, gets in his own way. As we're going to get outside the pocket, we really haven't had the chance to scramble. X coming open over the middle of the field, and I didn't set my feet. And he stopped running the route. What a waste of a down. Well, it's third and ten, a minute and one left. We are two for six on our third downs in this game. That is atrocious. I'm looking at an out route. I'm just not sure who I feel comfortable going to. It feels like pressure is coming, and Fontenot's going to be wide open. Stays in bounds. That's a bit of a mistake. We're going to have to go in the hurry up. I should have taken the yards and been happy with it, but I tried to do a little bit too much as it feels like they're bringing pressure over the middle. It's Chris Rucker. He comes down with it and takes a shot, but he gets to midfield. It feels like the decision-making isn't necessarily terrible, but the stick skills just aren't there today. I'm trying to read option. Maurice Tate can't make a guy miss. I was ready to take a timeout there. I just was hoping we were going to get positive yards. So that was uh, an interesting result. Second and 12. 44 seconds as we will go on the play action. I got to get out of the pocket. Why? It's going to be wide open if we can get it there. Robertson, the fullback, comes down with it into the end zone. Jeremy Robertson, you know, the least likely person on the offense you would see streaking down the field wide open. But there he is, great hands to come down with it. Rumble this way forward, gets the stiff arm cheese. And we'll take the lead with 35 seconds left in the half. Oh man, that was a uh, thing of beauty. I do say so myself. What can we do here on this kick return? Oh, that's a big gap. Oh, that got scary quick for Andrew Smith returning it. Well, 31 seconds and two timeouts. Georgia Tech certainly has more than enough opportunities here to try and score. Well, not if the quarterback's just hucking it away immediately, though. Not going to lie, I really want to bring pressure on one of these. I'm just not sure it's necessarily smart. Ah, screw it. We're bringing London. Seeing if we can get pressure on the quarterback who just gets away from it all. And he slides down. They'll have to take... Another timeout. Oh, that should have been a sack. 23 seconds, nearing midfield. Like I said, the stick skills just aren't quite there today. Third and two, they will step back. Looking for it. The out route is wide open. Catches it, gets out of bounds. Moving the chain, stopping the clock. That is what I would say brutal. They will step back. This is going to be a slip screen again. Nobody there. Sims, though. Oh, well, he didn't really do much, but we got the stop with the clock moving. I'm so tempted to take the timeout. They're going to go in the hurry up, and I'm not going to be the one to slow these guys down. They don't even want to take a timeout, so they're just going to go for it. Quarterback, all the time in the world, throws it up. This one could be intercepted, or it could be dangerous. Bouncing around. Oh, man, I thought that they were going to score there. Lake can't quite feign his man. Clock hits zeros, and we can go into the locker room. Maybe breathe in a little bit of a sigh of relief. 14-7. You know, these guys are hanging in better than a 93 overall USC. Uh, we just haven't played well. Our offense has struggled all game long. Our defense gave up one bad play. That's the only touchdown that they've gotten. We blew some assignments. We brought pressure when they went to the air. Other than that, it's been a solid game. But they get the ball to start the third quarter. 
And it's a one touchdown game, so they are definitely still in this one. A fight for who goes to play in the national championship game. This second half means a whole lot for every single player on both of these teams. Well, let's go ahead and kick this one away. Hope that the uh, defense maybe is a little bit rested up and can come out firing. Remember that first drive, we forced the beautiful three and out. Can we get one of those again? 127 yards of offense given up in that first half. 49 of it in one play. So if we can slow them down, that would be huge. They're going to have guys open. London and Logan, the tandem, bring down Lance James, but he gets pots of yards out of the... Uh, the pass play. I think this is where we're going to try to bring some pressure. Can we get Logan coming in off the edge? Pressure getting to the quarterback, but he gets it away. London gets the tackle on Chapman. It's third and four. They're moving forwards. Last time we brought the blitz, it was incredibly dangerous. Didn't really work out. We're doing it anyways here on this third and four. It's an option out towards the edge. Quarterback, no chance to pitch that one out. And there's the three and out we were looking for. A beautiful stop by George Smith. That's what we've been waiting for as uh, that was a minute off the clock in this third quarter. And hopefully the defense can come straight back out. I want to see the special teams get involved. Blocking from Arjir Rivera. There's nothing there for him. He's averaged five yards less than that on his three punt returns. I guess if there's one thing that the Yellow Jackets are doing well, it's stopping the return game. First and 10, RJ just taking it up the middle. We don't need home runs on every play, so we are fine with that. Now that Maurice is a threat to throw, we can run the football a little bit more and, you know, have it actually be a threat as RJ Rivera hits one of those spin moves and gets up the middle. Makes it a third and short. We're going to get risky with it. If they bring pressure, we could be in trouble, but it's a play action. I don't see it. Trying to get outside the pocket. Maurice State's going to be met at the line, and he gets out of bounds. He does get tackled and brought down. Hopefully no injury there, but he moves the chains. Called the play action, but did not feel comfortable from the snap. So just had to scramble as uh, we will step back looking again. Nobody really comfortably open. I'm going to get rid of this one. I didn't really feel like that was going to be worth the, uh, the, the risk that they could dominate us there. So we'll come back. Second and 10, try to run the football. A lot of white jerseys in the area, but RJ Rivera... Still not down, stands back up. <laughs> he might have got an extra half yard out of that. He might have been a little bit slow to get up, but still in the game. We're running a power play for him on third and four, up the middle, some blocking, and that was beautiful. All things considered, the fact we got eight, eight yards out of that is fantastic. We are completely balanced on offense. 19 runs to 19 passes, but it's going to be Derek Bentley taking run number 20 of the game. The safety coming up on the blitz gets there and stops it, though just to gain a two. What they don't realize is that we're using this as a drive to absolutely decimate the morale of this Georgia Tech defense. We are going to run every play possible. Just physical football on this drive, trying to set some sort of new tempo, trying to tell them that we mean business and we will just continue to run it down their throats until they submit. <laughs> And until we get into the end zone, third and three, this is a big down, and the offensive line holds beautifully. And that'll move us inside the uh, inside the 15 with another set of downs to work with. Feels like they have chances here and there to get stopped, but they are not capitalizing. So here's a triple option to Robertson. He's got one touchdown on the day, and on his first carry, he's got five yards. Like I said, run, run, run. And then run again. How about a jet sweep? They know it's coming, but can they stop it? Chris Rucker. I took a risk trying to get to the corner. He just wasn't quite quick enough. That's a big loss. Third and 10. I'm still running it. I'm not going to let one stop dictate what we do here. Try to get the defense to shift around a little bit. We will hand this off to Bentley. And Derek had maybe a little bit of space. I thought he was going to get picked up. There's a flag. I feel like this is coming backwards. That's pretty brutal. It's going to be like third and 20. Oh, they declined it. So it's fourth and six. And I know for a fact you guys are going to disagree with this call, but we're going to run it on fourth and six. I said we were going to run every single play on this drive, and I met it. RJ Rivera, just short. Oh, he gets stopped at the line again. If I cut it maybe back left, we're good. Georgia Tech with the big stop. It's the turnover on downs, but that brings them inside 
the five yard line. We're calling this one a run. We're gonna see if we can stop these guys, maybe for a loss, or if they can just get off to a run. Moore can't have the tackle and they get out 15 yards to safety. You know, if we lose this game, yeah, you can point to me being the entire thing at fault there. I'm trying to bring some pressure, but they're gonna scramble. Smith can't get the tackle. Logan gets tripped up by Smith. This quarterback, although he's fumbled, has had a lot of success scrambling with the football. George Smith, one of the best at getting to the quarterback in the nation, having no success today. They're gonna go for the run, and oh my goodness, they got eight yards out of that. I'm trying to use Ur Smith to try and get a little bit of pressure on these guys, but it's just not working right now. Second and two, if they go with another run, we could be in trouble. Pressure getting to the quarterback, but he's got the quick out route to Arnold. And Nick Arnold gets another first down as they move across midfield. Georgia Tech took our mind games running the football every play and has completely pulled a reverse card on us because they are dominating. We can't do anything to stop them. They seem like a completely new offense out on the field right now. We're seeing quick passes, successful runs, really everything from the Yellow Jackets is this is gonna be a run out towards the edge. Napoleon can't get the tackle, thankfully. We do pull him down finally for Lawson. Uh-oh, Lance James a little bit shaken up on the play. That's actually going to end the third quarter as well. So at the end of three, really not a whole lot of change. 14-7 to seven is what we're still seeing on the scoreboard. Six minutes, one quarter to play until we decide who's making it into the national championship game. If we can't get the stop here, I will be disappointed. I could see a slip screen, but not with the motion. Got to watch for 84 on this one. It's a handoff up the middle. Rawls slowed him down. Clinton Whitfield brought him down. Just like that, we got ourselves a third and 12 trying to bring some pressure. Bentley forces the strip sack. Carter's going to pick it up. Two fumbles for this quarterback, and Carter is off to the races. Number 12's tracking him down, but it won't be enough. And it's a scoop and score touchdown for the big man. That's going to give us a two touchdown lead in this fourth quarter of the college football playoff semifinal. That could not have come at a better time. 21 to seven, Eastern Michigan looking good. Back spasms for that Georgia Tech running back or for somebody on Georgia Tech. Maybe they're tight end, so he's out for the game. And they should have taken the timeout or gone in the hurry up because letting the quarter break come really killed the momentum that they had going for them. Two forced fumbles is uh, an absolute rarity for this team. So you love to see that. And now we're going to see a even more aggressive Georgia Tech as they try and come back from this deficit. Quarterback scrambling again. And I'm going to be trying to strip the football anytime we can with him. We've seen the butterfingers already. We know it's a liability. What can we do? The Frenchman can't get there as they run it up the middle and get the first down. We brought pressure and still there was nothing that we could do to get them there. So impressive uh, running right now for Georgia Tech as they will go to the ground again and Lake just got popped in the backfield well now we've got our uh second and 14 james that running back that was injured has a mild concussion no he's officially out for the game as oh my gosh mind games happening with this running back as james chapman somehow got nine yards there i'm gonna go ahead and call that next level elusiveness as the running back gets squirrely with it on third and five he will step back looking to throw and he goes over the middle guy gets his man and they get the first down. I feel like maybe he was close to losing his forward progress, but anyways, we tackle him over the line. And it's another first down for these guys to work with. But it's another false start. Lake's got to be getting really frustrated at that. His offensive line almost taking the team out of the game here. At this point, the defense is feeling themselves. They know what's coming as well. Is this going to be pass central? First and 15, Noah toss to the edge. Logan's on fire. He's not going to miss that tackle. Curtis Ward's going to lose three, and it's second and 18. Well, we're just going to contain the QB at this point. No need for him to be allowed to scramble. They might have caught us offside, though. No flag on the play. They ran it. Foolish decision. Decision. I can't. Decision? How do you say that word? It's third and 20. If the third and 20 isn't enough, we're going to bring Smith in some quick pressure to see if we can get to this quarterback. He's feeling maybe a little bit gas pressure getting to him. No strip sack. He throws it up. Green drops the interception, but it's incomplete. Fourth and 20. And Georgia Tech maybe starting to get a little bit blazed. Pump formation out for the Yellow Jackets. Again, we are in the safe zone. No need to risk them faking this. 
I mean, fourth quarter, three and a half minutes, two-score game. They should be trying to do everything they can, but getting rid of the football, I know it's fourth and 20, but you're going to let us hold on to the ball now? Personally, I think that's a big mistake because we're going to keep with the same philosophy that got us into a little bit of trouble earlier and just keep running the football. No reason to go away from it. We're going to start burning this clock. This one definitely closer than I ever expected it to be. But we've got RJ Rivera just following his blockers right now, being patient with the running and finding the gaps. And as a team now, we're over 100 yards on the day. RJ's at 97. Doesn't feel to me like there's a whole lot they can do. We'll see if they even take their timeouts as we're approaching two minutes left in this game. That was a stupid risky pitch, but it works out. That one should have been probably a touchdown for Georgia Tech, but the uh, defensive end played it poorly. I don't know if you guys caught that. Maybe rewind a couple of seconds, but uh, Maurice did like a, a no-look pass on that one. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. He was looking left. It kind of looked like he tried to throw the ball left, but it shot out to the right. We got the first down. Georgia Tech has been taking their timeouts, but with 204 and just one remaining, it might be too little, too late. Derek Bentley up the middle on this first down. It's going to shed one tackle and get six yards, and now there's just nothing they can do. It seems like it's all arm tackles. Maybe the defense is tired. And I think one more first down should just about seal the deal. A fumble here would be devastating. Oh, Derek Bentley. That looked like a hurt. Kind of got speared on that play. I think in today's football, that gets penalized, but not here. Chris Rutger, we know he's quick. Can we get him with the jet sweep? It didn't work earlier in the game. It's going to work well this time. Chris Rutger streaking down the field, but he gets pushed out of bounds. Well, that works as a timeout for Georgia Tech there. Unfortunately for them, maybe fortunately, I don't feel like scoring. So we're just going to come out and knee this one down. Maurice State doesn't need to risk losing the football at this point in the game. But I guess we have to run one more play anyways. So we'll go ahead and do that. Little run to Bentley out towards the edge. Well, he's not going to get a whole lot there. But that'll do it for us on this day. It was a low-scoring affair, but on this third and 11. Actually, we're just throwing up towards the end zone. We got it off in time. Stepping back outside the pocket. All right, well, why was open, but <laughs> tried to showboat. It didn't, it didn't work. We didn't want to take the sack, so Maurice gets an incompletion. But not only have we won the Rose Bowl, not only have we won the Peach Bowl, but now we have a chance to play for the national championship game. Play of the game for sure. Goes to the scoop and score touchdown. Defense was lights out. One bad play all game long. Is really all you can say other than that. They did a phenomenal job. Confetti falling once again. But we are not over. We got one more game to play. I don't know who it's going to be against. I feel like it'll be Georgia. And it's not going to be an easy game. So there it is again. Another win for us. The season continues. 14-1 on the year one game to go 21 to 7 is the final score of this one we outrushed them we outpassed them we won the turnover battle we won the time of possession battle georgia tech they weren't out of it the entire game a two score game is very much still on but a couple of bad mistakes and a quarterback who can't hold on to the football i think is what ends up costing them the most rj rivera is our offensive player of the game 19 carries for 103 yards and a touchdown and it's Avery Rawls, the right end, who is our defensive player of the game. He had a sack, two tackles for loss, and a forced fumble. We can add the Peach Bowl trophy to the profile. And now it's time to head into ESPN and see who it is that we are playing in the national championship game. Uh, this is not where we want to be. We want scores and schedules. <laughs> and that's how we figure out who we're going to play. I think we should be able to scroll pretty far down. We are looking for Georgia at Clemson in the Fiesta Bowl. Who is it that is meeting us in that final? It's Georgia in a close one. 17 to 13 over Clemson. It's a huge 14 point fourth quarter that allows them to come back and win. They scored a field goal at the end of the first half and nothing until that fourth quarter after that. Couple of touchdowns by Boyd on the passes. So that's who we're going to have to look out for. Vincent Boyd seems like it could be dangerous. And Georgia, the number seven seed in this playoff, makes it to the national championship game. So it's going to be one versus seven in that natty. And I'm going to be honest, hopefully I can get it out really soon. 
I did start a new job recently, so things have been a little bit hectic schedule-wise. So if you're wondering how May we had uploads basically every other day for the entire month and how June it's been like three total. That's maybe a little bit of an explanation. Regardless though, thank you guys for the support through it all. I appreciate that a ton. And if you want to continue to support the channel, please hit like on the video, especially if you enjoyed it. If you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do that as well. And then head down to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. Also links to my Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and our community Discord. It's also a link to the college football revamp mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. Version 18 just released, so 43 teams got updated uniforms and a few other fun things added in as well. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Gray Boys, and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios. Special thanks to our Tier 3 members, Durham Finch, Avery Binkley, and Warmaster777.